Viewing live. If you're viewing the replay, welcome to you as well. Um, we're going to try our best to cover as much as we can here. But if you have questions afterwards and you're watching the replay, you always know that you can tag one of us, uh, Veronica or I, in the Facebook group after the replay is up. If, and I'm sure we'll be happy to, to answer you there. Um, so welcome to the live chats again. I'm so happy that I'm back on these now. Um, I'm moving forward, hoping to do one a month at the end of every month. So hopefully the last Wednesday of each month so that we can connect in a bit more an engaged way than just the Facebook group. Um, and Veronica has been so nice to join us today. And she's gonna talk to us a little bit more about her experience with, she works with yoga teachers a lot and her experience with something called imposter syndrome. And if we, if you're new to that term, it's really just kind of a fancy way of saying, you know, us feeling like a fraud or us feeling like, like who are we to lead people down this path? So we're going to touch on that topic and try and cover what we can. And then if you have any questions, save them for the end or drop them in the comments as we go. And then we'll take a peek at that um, before we wrap up. We'll, we'll take a few minutes at the end to look over anything that any that's come up for anyone. Um, so yes, welcome Veronica. Veronica is a yoga teacher herself and she's a yoga teacher business coach. So she works with yoga teachers through her free Facebook group. She has a Facebook group um, all about, she's the founder of the Yoga Business Kula. So her Facebook group is called the Yoga Business Kula. And she's also going to be offering an online course soon. So um, all of the information again is below in the offers button, the offer buttons below, but we'll We'll get into that at the end as well. So thank you for being here, Veronica. If I have I missed anything on introing you? No, no. Thank you so much for having me. It's it's so delightful to spend an afternoon talking about this stuff because this is you know what I love to talk about. <laughs> it's important and it's something that I think we all feel and sometimes we don't maybe don't always talk about it because it's a bit it's almost like this shame around it. But um, but yeah, we all we all feel it, and I'm pretty sure. People feel it in every career choice. I'm sure that even, you know, doctors show up to work and end up feeling that kind of sense of, of who am I to do this? So, um, so yeah, I think the best way we decided to kind of go about this is I'm going to ask Veronica some questions um, to start the conversation around this and her and I will kind of bounce off of each other. And again, we would love for you to chime in on in the comments if anything does come up or if you have questions as we go. So firstly, Veronica, can you kind of explain to the audience what your definition is, is of imposter syndrome? What would you say that is in, in yoga teachers? Yeah, so the actual definition of imposter syndrome is um, a feeling of being inadequate uh, despite evidence to the contrary, despite the, that um, you are successful. So it's really uh, once you are in the role and having those doubts. And I think anyone who's ever stood up in front of a room, whether you're, you know, a motivational speaker, a yoga teacher, um, you know, even an expert in a field like a doctor or a therapist, I think you're inevitably going to have that that pang um, that makes you feel like, oh, wh why am I the one up here? Why am I the authority? Why am I the person that uh, 40 eyeballs are on? Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a natural, it's a natural feeling and it comes up a lot for us as yoga teachers. I think for the fact that yoga is, you know, it's, it's interesting in this modern day time that we're in with Instagram, especially mm -hmm. there's so much about, about putting yourself out there as having the perfect life and the perfect body. And, mm -hmm. you know, like you just wake up and drink your green smoothie and sit down <laughs> two hours and you just have the best life and you don't worry about anything you're in a zen state 24 hours a day all the time and yes it's like nobody's life is like that not one person I work with I've worked with hundreds of yoga teachers and I have all my best friends are yoga teachers and I don't know any person whose life is like that it's so true that this feeling is really prevalent in our industry if you can call it that which i think you can actually call it that now which is kind of insane mm -hmm. in itself. but um it's a different conversation but mm -hmm. yeah in this industry i do think that it's super common and i think one of the other reasons it's, it's showing up and it's common for us is that all you need is 200 hours of training to be a yoga teacher mm -hmm. and um i'm sure many of you have read malcolm gladwell's um 
what is it? I think it was outliers where yeah. you, that you need 10,000 hours of practice to be an expert. Yeah. And the truth is, I mean, I, I work at yoga works, which is a, a big yoga studio chain corporation, if you will, the man, and <laughs> I work for the man and we pump out 200 hour trainings. And I yeah. have to tell you the, the, stu- the people coming in to take 200 hour trainings, I mean, you're lucky if they've taken 10 yoga classes in their life. Mm-hmm. People really are being sold a bill of goods that this is a career choice, like being a, a, like a teacher or be, like a school teacher or being um, a, a doctor or whatever, you know, like a, an actual, and it's, it's really, you're signing up to be an entrepreneur, which is mm-hmm. why I created my course. But the thing about not needing that much practice to actually stand in front of a room and be the leading authority or expert, I think it's inevitable that we're going to feel these these strange feelings that make mm-hmm. us doubt ourselves. Yeah, totally. And that's that's such a good point, too, is that I think a lot of it does in yoga teachers specifically. So if we're talking about kind of how it shows up for yoga teachers specifically, because like I said at the beginning, I'm pretty sure that everyone in every position has probably felt this at one point or another. Um, I know that I'm, aside from being a yoga teacher, I'm also a designer and it shows up for me in different ways too in that capacity. So it comes and goes, but, um, but yeah, the, the interesting thing is that you do, as opposed to kind of these other jobs that people go to school for and, you know, have years and years under their belt of education. And now you can go and get a 200 hour teacher training certificate and teach yoga class. Um, I think that does kind of play a role in how we feel or how we feel we're being perceived. So do you think that, do you think that have, you know, someone who has a 200 hour teacher training, what advice would you have for someone like that who feels like they are ready or in some position to be able to teach a class, whether that's because they've just been practicing for so long in their own body and they know how to kind of, kind of convey that or communicate that. Or do you have advice for people who maybe feel a little bit like I've taken a 200 hour training and, I don't feel like I'm a person that can stand in front of 40 people and teach them yoga. Like, do you think that there's a difference between someone feeling that way and someone not? Like what advice would we have for someone who, who just got out of a 200 hour? So, um, a couple of things. I definitely think everyone should go out there and teach because it's the only way of getting over it. And, um, I mean, despite what I said about the 10,000 hours, Malcolm Gladwell, you don't have to believe that. That's Mm -hmm. just something, um, you know, you're going to teach before you're a master. That's mm-hmm. the thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I think the best advice I have is to go out and teach, number yeah. one. Um, I do have, uh, I, I've, I've talked about this a topic a lot, and I have a YouTube video about it, a YouTube video about it, which we'll share with you guys, mm-hmm. uh, which really delves into like three action steps. But one of my favorite action steps for someone coming out of a 200-hour training is mm-hmm. to teach free. Mm-hmm. And what now there's so much going on talking about yoga and business and um, the business of yoga. And it, it feels, it's funny because I've been talking about this for the past five years and now it seems like everyone's on the bandwagon of being mm-hmm. like coaching people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yoga teachers because yoga teachers typically come in because they do this out of passion and love. They don't do this because they're really good at numbers and marketing. <laughs> like that's not why you become a yoga teacher. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's interesting that that's happening. And I think, um, there's a lot of talk about don't teach for free and and honor your worth. And one of the best ways to get over imposter syndrome or these feelings of not being, um, adequate Mm -hmm. is to teach for free and get comfortable because those people, if they're not paying you, Mm -hmm. I mean, their expectation is somewhat low, right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So the first yoga class I ever taught was at my friend said, oh, you know, the people in my office want to do yoga at lunch. Yeah. You do yoga all the time. Yeah. Maybe you could come and teach us. Um, what could we pay? Like, wh- how much would we, would you charge? And I said, honestly, I've never taught. Like, mm-hmm. don't pay me anything. Yeah. I would just love to come and do that. Yeah. And that was my first yoga class. And I was hooked. I loved the feeling. I loved helping those people. And I didn't, of course, I was insanely nervous. Mm -hmm. But I also felt like the expectation Mm -hmm. was fairly low. Mm -hmm. And 
not in a bad way, in a way like they were so appreciative that I was showing up to teach them for free on their lunch break. Yeah, that's, I think that's such good advice too. Like that's, I mean, when I first started teaching too, I was, you just, sh you just need to teach whatever, whoever you can in order to find out what you like, what you don't like, and just build the confidence because everyone has to start somewhere. Everyone has to have a first job. Everyone has to have a first go at whatever it is that they're pursuing. Um, and I remember I taught in, in my workplace too, they asked me to teach before I was even a cert, like I was doing, doing my training and I was kind of in the middle of it. And I think one other thing that we could say to people is like, is be really transparent with people about how you're feeling. Like it makes a human connection. And for me, when they approached me to teach them in the thing, you know, I was like, you know what, I am happy to do it, but you need to know I'm not a certified teacher yet. They paid me like $2 each a class because they insisted on paying like something, but, um, but yeah, I, I was very honest as I progressed. Like I stood in front of my groups of classes that I did teach at the very beginning. And I said, you know what? I'm a new teacher, bear with me. I might stumble on my words. You know, I might not have the answers to everything. Um, and I think that just, that took such a burden off of my shoulders. Like it was like, I was not trying to pretend I was something I wasn't. It was me showing up being like, I'm new at this. I'm terrified. I'm going to do my best and let's just hope for the best. And, and it just, I don't know. I think it built a bit of a relationship with them that that was genuine. It was more like, I'm a human and I'm new at this and I'm just starting. Um, and then when you do teach in that capacity and you start to build the confidence, it becomes less and less that you need to explain yourself and you just you just grow into it a little bit more. And you evolve as a teacher and I'm, I'm sure every teacher starts at 200 hours and ends up taking all these other trainings as they go because it's a little bit addicting. But, but yeah, I love that advice. It's just, just teach, just, you've got to start. You have to start and you've got to show up if you want to grow. So. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that that's, you know, I think people, and I do this too, we put off things until mm -hmm. we have it perfect. Mm -hmm. And I always say, don't let perfect get in the way mm -hmm. of good. Yeah, it's that like, in you know, You're not going to, you know, listen, the first, I, I remember teaching a class, I was subbing for one of my teachers and the class was full and everyone knew me because I was mm -hmm. there a lot and it was in a studio and 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 it was and it was nerve wracking. And I remember I forgot side angle on the mm -hmm. second side, and I was like punishing myself yeah. over it. But the truth was, everybody was like, "That was a great class." Exactly. So yeah. It's it really like let's not let perfect get in the way of good, mm -hmm. and 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 let yourself mm -hmm. let yourself trip up a few times because that's that's normal exactly and I've, I've totally done that before too and either they just totally don't notice and you just keep going and no one no one noticed or someone will be like oh we forgot the other side and i'll be like oh sorry let's do the other side or like oh, no. i've been teaching for almost 10 years i'm like oh sorry guys yeah. whatever <laughs> I, don't, and right. I don't care at all no. i don't do shits i'm it's so funny because when I, like I know my students so well and I have rapport with them and yeah like I don't I don't it, it's so not something that even phases me now but exactly. in the beginning it did and, and whenever you start something everything feels important like yeah. I recently started teaching kundalini yoga mm -hmm. and um of course I have you know a little bit of a leg up because I'm used to standing in front of a room and, mm -hmm. and teaching people but it's an entirely different system I've been teaching vinyasa flow for almost 10 years and um, and Kundalini is really like where my passion and excitement is right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, what I've just recently started teaching it and everything feels important to me, like mm -hmm. how I instruct the breath and how I tune in and how much rest I give them and every little piece of it. It's like, I obsess over the minutia. Yeah. We're going to do that in the beginning. That's mm -hmm. just know that that's part of the process of learning mm -hmm. and developing your skills. And then mm -hmm. eventually it becomes second nature yeah I think it yeah I totally agree it does it does build as time goes on and as, as kind of experience happens but I think it's just like you said it's important that we just give ourselves room to trip up like everyone kind of is doing something different in their life and as yoga teachers us standing in front of people and teaching um I think we put this also this pressure on ourselves to maintain a certain flow and you know, ease in our class and we want to keep people kind of in themselves and um, and then if we trip up, it's kind of taking them out of that moment and we feel maybe a little bit more guilty or like people are noticing more than they are, but, but yeah, yeah. just give yourself room. Um, I would love to know kind of too, how you, so when this, this imposter syndrome and these voices start showing up in yoga teachers, or if you've 
ever experience it in a class. Like, how do you think that affects, how do you think that affects your teaching and not in the tripping up way that we just talked about, yeah. but actually like going into your own head and, and starting to feel that like, okay, am I actually, am I actually a good enough teacher to be leading these people through this class? Like, how do you think that starts to affect our teaching? Um, well, from an outsider perspective, because I do mentor a ton of teachers, so I go to classes a lot and take notes and, um, from an outsider perspective, what I see happening a lot, what we tend to go to when I feel like I see the person going into that place, what often happens is they're using a lot of crutch words like, um, and like, mm -hmm. and good guys. Mm -hmm. Or the filler language. <laughs> the filler that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Um, one of the fillers that a lot of teachers use is overly um, complimenting the students. Mm -hmm. Like, great guys, great Good guys. Good job. Yeah. Because now it doesn't mean anything because yeah. you're just saying it. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, I think a lot of people go into demoing. So mm -hmm. they're not necessarily comfortable being seen as the authority in the room. So they, so they go and they actually do the class with them, mm -hmm. which keeps them away from actually having to see the people. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's those are some of the things I see happening when people mm -hmm. feel, when it feels to me like they're second guessing themselves. Um, so one of the ways that I like to get over that is to actually stand at the back of the room. So I'm standing That's behind good advice, yeah. Them. Um, so when I'm standing behind them, I can, first of all, I can see their practice without being like creepy and like staring at them. Okay. Like, so they can't see me staring at yeah. them. And um, so if I stand behind where they're looking, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's like they're in high lunge and I'm at the back of the room or if they're in warrior two face and, you know, their chest is facing the left side of the room, I'm standing on the right side of the room. Mm -hmm. um, th that's something I do because First, firstly, I don't want the practice to be about me. I don't want them looking at, you know, the fact that I wore makeup today or didn't, mm -hmm. or like that I have good leggings on, or I, you know, I'm wearing a black bra with a white shirt yeah. or whatever it is. Like, not that I would do that, but yeah. it's not about me and yeah. it's not about me doing the poses. And it's, you know, I, I always say as a teacher, you are here to, you're a communicator more than the fact that you're teaching yoga asana, you are here to become a great communicator mm -hmm. and as a teacher I'm teaching my students to listen to themselves mm -hmm. so the only way that you can learn how to listen to yourself is to listen to someone else first right so it's like Yogi Bhajan used to say that mm -hmm. like you have to learn to obey so that you can be the master and I think that for me like standing behind the students it takes me out of it mm -hmm. but for myself personally, if I'm having a bad day or if I'm having those doubts, I don't feel like the spotlight is on me. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a little bit of room to breathe and be and mm -hmm. and roll my eyes if I say something ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> you know, making faces. So, things, like so that, that's one of the ways I deal with it. Yeah. Um, um, I feel like I'm getting off topic. From no, that was good. Actually, that totally kind of segued into what I yeah. want to ask next, which was like kind of, so when we're actually standing in front of a class and teaching, like, I love that advice because I can find myself doing that sometimes. Like I'll realize like, oh, I, I need to leave my mat. Like I'm sitting here instructing these people and kind of like watching, but I'm like, obviously, you know, it, it just makes more sense to, like you said, get off the mat, go watch and see where you can help and be of service and like build yes. your confidence that way. It also just helps you so much more like I find it's a little bit of a crutch for me for my words. Like when I'm doing it, I can much more easily if I'm like sort of demoing or if I'm sort of kind of it's not necessarily the full pose, but I'll be teaching and I'll be like, you know, like and reach up and grab your right wrist and I'll be like kind of doing it. And um, that's such a crutch for me, I've noticed, because that helps me with my language. And if we can start building that strength, like strengthening that off the mat and being able to see that and, and see the class, then I think that's such good helpful advice for just building confidence in general um, in our teaching skills. So yeah, I love that. For sure. And I find that a lot of the time people use the demoing as a crutch because their instruction is so clear and so great. And I'm, and I wonder why um, they do it. And then I realize, Oh, it's like their own way of soothing themselves, mm -hmm. their own way of, of feeling comfortable in this mm -hmm. environment. Because the truth is, 
most yoga teachers are really sensitive people that are really self-aware mm-hmm. and you're going to have those moments of feeling uncomfortable with the, the, the light shining on you. Um, and then there's this weird dichotomy or paradox that it's not about you. Mm-hmm. Like the, the spotlight is on you yet. It's completely not about you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so one of the things I always say is um, get over yourself mm-hmm. because we actually think that we are so much more important in yeah. the than we actually are because yeah. The students are doing their thing. I mean, they're struggling. Most people that are coming to yoga class, unless you're teaching, you know, two, three handstands in the middle of the room kind of thing, there's going to be at least majority of the, a majority of the class, I would assume, Mm -hmm. are struggling with the poses and they're, you know, just trying to keep up. There's always people that are just trying to keep up and, and keep their head above water. And they, and so many people come to yoga and they feel like, oh, I'm not good enough, or I'm not good enough, as good as the person next to me. Mm-hmm. So they're caught up in their own story. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not about you. Like, what you're saying is only maybe half as important as you think it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they've got their own story going on in their head, which is yeah. why they keep yoga to begin with. Yeah, I, I really love that, actually. And that's, that's such a good strategy to kind of pull you out of your own head. Like, um, yeah. And it, it is if, if you I mean if and then one of the best ways to even test this out is, you know, take yoga classes with other teachers. And when you're in a yoga class or think you're even just kind of put yourself in a situation now, I can tell you that when I'm in a yoga class, the teacher's role is really, in my opinion, when I'm taking a class is to help guide me through you know a sequence and to kind of bring me back when I'm kind of going off or there's certain cues that the yoga teacher has a strong role in. But you're right. Like everyone is there for their own reason and their own story. And it is get over yourself. Like we're, we're thinking our spotlights on us and we're in our own head being like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I said that. Oh my gosh. They know that I'm like, I don't know anything about this or or this conversation that happens in the head. And meanwhile, they're just like thinking about their own self. Like they're doing the same thing to their themselves and they're there for their own reasons. And, And we need to just kind of recognize our role and and then that helps it helps me too, to just pull it back and and keep it into perspective like they're here for them you're here to help that and guide that but they're not listen like i don't even listen to every single word my yoga teachers are saying like they'll go on Whoa. during shavasana and i'm like oh that sounds nice oh what what did they just say i'm i've lost it you know you don't pay attention to every word yeah for sure yeah the other thing i wanted to kind of bring into that just before we kind of like start to wrap up is so there's this there's this way that it affects us actually in a class teaching. What about kind of on the behind the scenes when, you know, I mean, we're a yoga teacher when we're in front of students and then we're a yoga teacher when we're just kind of out and about, we're marketing or we're trying to, you know, find students or get our workshops out there. All of these things that we do also that it's not just us in front of a, a group of students. Um, imposter syndrome leaks in, in those ways as well. And um, how maybe like there's a little bit we can touch on with how to build the confidence by realizing the value that we give. Like, do you, do you have any kind of advice for the yoga teachers listening? Like in terms of building confidence through the value to, to, to build our kind of self-worth as a yoga teacher, um, not to sound kind of like cliche, but to build the confidence around, Hey, we're providing something really good here for these people. Like, do you ever kind of come across that or what's your kind of advice? Um, yeah, I think focusing on what you have to give is really mm-hmm. important. So I find that we, including myself, um, focus on what we don't have. So mm-hmm. we look at people that have come before us, we look at our teachers, we say, oh my gosh, you know, um, so-and-so has so much anatomy knowledge, and I don't know half as much about the human body as that person. Mm-hmm. And why am I the one here teaching this workshop about, you know, alignment or whatever. Yeah. Or whatever it is, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? But the thing is like your students are connecting with you. They Mm -hmm. want more from you. Mm -hmm. Um, And every, there's a yoga, not every yoga teacher is for every person. 
you know, like I, I think about it often. I, the teachers I love, I can't imagine that people would not like them. Mm-hmm. There are inevitably people that don't like them. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I go to the teachers and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe anyone yeah. is in the room. Mm-hmm. And then there are people that love them and their class is packed. So the people that are resonating with you are resonating with you for, for some reason, mm-hmm. right? Whatever it is, it's different for all of us. Mm-hmm. And they want to learn it from you. So while you might not be the leading expert on anatomy or um, breath or whatever it is you're teaching, I mean, if you have to learn it from someone. Again, I go back to what I said initially, like you're not going to be a master from the first day you start teaching. But the people in the room are resonating with you and the way you are presenting things. Mm-hmm. So have confidence in that relationship. That's why I always say in my like when I coach people, the relationship building part of being a yoga teacher is so important mm-hmm. because students are really showing up for that connection. I'm going to show up and take the workshop with a teacher that I'm comfortable with, that I know that I enjoy being in their presence versus the person that might be the expert, but I've never had an experience with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really, I really agree with that. And it just goes with I think it kind of goes with what we talked about at the beginning with someone just like you really have to teach and put yourself out there to start building this. And it kind of does come with time. And over time you do, you start to find your voice because I think at the beginning teachers sort of pull things from other teachers and it sort of doesn't feel authentic in how they're teaching, but you know, they heard it so many times or they're, this teacher says something that they really like, like that kind of thing. It's almost like a mimicking that but I think as you teach and as you go on you you start to build your own voice and that is so true like there's there's teachers that you will love and there's teachers there's students that will love you and there are students that won't resonate with you it's 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 sort of like the whole I don't know if anyone's like the unsubscribers on your email list everyone's like devastated when someone unsubscribes but it's like that's that's because they they don't resonate with you and that means that there's room now for someone else to come and and connect with you for some reason so we all tell stories and we all tell similar stories but we all have our unique point of view and perspective that we bring to the table. So building that and starting to just get the experience going, I think that does for sure help build the confidence when And we're also I think that one of the things that's really interesting is going back to being a beginner. So like I'm learning this so much as a coach and as you know a Kundalini teacher, I'm I'm taking on the role of teacher but in different ways in different Mm -hmm. methods right so the first time I ran my program the yoga business school and master class which is basically like a four-week training program for yoga teachers to grow their Mm -hmm. business and to and to shift their money mindset and and you know get their stuff together regarding treating themselves as an entrepreneur versus Mm -hmm. as like a yoga yoga. yeah Yeah. as a hobby you know yeah um, so what I find really interesting is that the first time I did my program, I, I picked four to five people that I felt were my ideal client and I had them and I invited them to do the program for free mm-hmm. and that I didn't have anyone pay me because I was mm-hmm. like, I need to figure out how this is going to go. I need guinea pigs and I didn't want the pressure of having someone pay me a significant amount of money and again, have those high expectations when I wasn't mm-hmm. sure what I could bring to the table. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that, you know, as you start to develop um, those relationships with your students and there's things you want to try to do, like let's say you're really interested and you want to teach a workshop on the chakras and you've never done that, mm-hmm. you know, invite 10 of your favorite most loyal students to, to come and do like a special thing. I mean, now it's like the holiday time. It's the perfect time to be like, I want to do something special for you guys. Mm-hmm. My only um, small workshop that I'm doing. Yeah. And you can test the, you can test the, the waters and see how it goes. Mm-hmm. You have to always put this pressure on yourself to, to show up and, and, and be perfect out of the gate. I mean, we keep kind of, we keep, circling back to that concept. But I think that that's really valuable. In fact, I made that mistake recently. I, I, I put together this um, workshop on business for yoga teachers and we hosted it at Yoga Works and you know, we charged what we charged for every other three hour workshop. And the people that showed up were 
totally not who I expected. And then I was totally caught off guard and what I had prepared was not yeah. the right fit. And I was like, you know what? I should have done this workshop for free and ran through my material with people that I knew yeah. were the right fit. And I would, you know, like I, yeah. so I, I think you can, um, there's value in, in giving yourself the freedom to do things for free so that you can use them as a learning experience. And mm -hmm. people are really willing to help you. Mm -hmm. uh, like I can't tell you how grateful people are when you invite them to be a part of something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's just like, so it's such a good confidence boost when you are going to run something new to at least have run through it and gotten some feedback, um, been able to kind of prove things or, or at least get, get a good sense of how it's going to go before you just kind of dive in and do it. Because I think that relieves a lot of pressure. Um, and then also kind of takes us out of our own head. If, if, you know, once we've gone through it and we feel like we've gotten good feedback or something like that, then when we go to step in front of, you know, a group of strangers or a teacher or other students that are paying us for a workshop, then we can feel a lot more confident in knowing that we've gone through it once already. It was good. We can do it again, that kind of thing. So exactly. that was awesome. Um, I think we'll start to wrap up because I don't want to keep everyone for too long because I like to keep these kind of short little snippets. But that was awesome. I think it's so helpful just even to give yourself the freedom and the room to let these feelings come and go and just know that everyone's kind of human as we all go through the experiences together. And, um, and just knowing that I'm pretty sure if you ask, you know, someone in a very high authority role that they've probably felt this at some point too. Um, and, and the, the best way I think to combat it or at least go with the flow with it is leave the space for that to happen. And also, um, you know, be honest, be transparent with your audience. And, and then, like you said too, like just run through things, build confidence, teach, go teach in a park, go, teach your coworkers at lunch, you know, start to build the voice and, and figure out who, what place you're coming from. Um, and then we all kind of can step into our role a little bit more confidently, I think. Um, so Veronica has a really awesome YouTube video kind of about this stop feeling like a fraud uh, concept and all of her links. So she's got her Facebook group for free, Facebook Kula, um, and her website and her YouTube video in the offers buttons below. Um, anyone getting the replay for this, I'll send, it'll be in the Facebook group. So we'll, we'll post that as well. Um, but yeah, Veronica, do you have anything where else we can kind of find you online or any last minute? Well, you can find me on Instagram, Veronica Peretti. Um, I post a lot of, um, yoga teacher centric stuff mm -hmm. on there. Um, the website, Veronica Peretti.com, which is getting a, mm -hmm. you know, uh, left in yeah. the next <laughs> couple weeks. And, um, and I'm starting my, my courses, um, launching up again, ramping up again in January. So, um, definitely sign up for my email list on my website and you'll be the first to know about, um, the next iteration of the, the yoga business school and masterclass, which is coming, um, January, 2017. Perfect. And that's about it. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for showing up. That was actually really, that was so valuable. I think just for us to, as even as reminders, just to be like, oh yeah, this is like, okay. Um, so yeah. I appreciate you taking time to show up. For and sure. again, anyone who's watching the replay, Veronica's in, a, in the group too, the Facebook group. I'm there. You can just tag us if you have questions that come up while you watch this. And we are happy to kind of just show up and, and be able to respond that way if you weren't able to make it live. Um, otherwise I think we will sign off. So thank you, Veronica and everyone else have a wonderful day. So we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye.